portare tutto in equilibrio. In 2022, Gian Battista was awarded knighthood by the Italian Republic for his contribution to the restoration and preservation of the historic Vapolicella. With the acquisition of Villa San Michele, a 19th century Austrian prison now converted to a tasting space for the Ugolini wines, the family estate rises above the Vapolicella hills as a historical treasure. Today, Villa San Michele is one of the most fascinating places in the Valpolicella. Giambattista entrusted the restoration of the villa to small craftsmen from all over Italy. Glassmakers, metal engravers, wood carers, stone sculptors with the artistic talent that distinguishes Italy from the rest of the world. One of the restorative projects at Villa San Michele are the characteristic stone walls called Marogne. Found all over and around the Vapolicella, the Marogne are the original solar panels with multiple functions. They support the priceless landscapes so the hilly vineyards don't wash away from the rain. The stones absorb heat from the sunlight, keeping the soils warm even in the winter months and give home to insects that keep the soils in balance and fertile for the vineyards. Gian Battista found the most skilled stone carvers in the Vapolicella to restore these walling systems that contribute not just the art and beauty of nature of the region, but also give rise to monumental wines. Gian Battista is not simply the owner of a family winery, but a person with a philanthropic vision that combines the nature, history, and craftsmanship of the Vapolicella into a wine experience with meaning. His commitment to safeguarding art, nature, and the great works of humankind somehow finds itself in every glass of Ugolini wines. I arrived at the Ugolini estate in early September, just as the harvest was beginning. Patches of rain clouds were hovering in the area, and so the harvest team were on call to pick the grapes at any moment. The first single vineyard we visited was Pozzetto. It's located in front of Villa San Michele. Pozzetto produces the Vapolicella Classico wine, a traditional red blend of the region. As I walked down the rows of Pozzetto, I felt immediately transported into ancient Italy, a time when the world was too large to comprehend and no technology to distract the mind. The beautiful architecture of the vines express the natural achievements of humankind and uniquely representative of ancient Italian scenery. Pozzetto is the Ugolini family's first generation vineyard. It's the legacy left behind by grandfather Angelo, the founder of the family estate. Here, the winds of the valley have dragged stones torn from the mountain rocks to formulate the soils and support the Pergola Veronese vine training system, which produces 90 quintals per hectare. The vines grow above the head in orderly fashion. It's a brilliant ancient system of cultivation that can be traced back thousands of years. The canopies protect the grape cluster from too much sun exposure. Protecting the grape skins maintains the aromatic compounds found in the grapes. Pergola Veronese also produces a corridor below the grapes 
allowing winds to blow underneath and keeping them cooler, especially during hot summers. The canopy system with that wind corridor allow the grapes to develop with higher acids, ample polyphenolic material, and proper sugar levels, so the resulting wines are par excellence. The key to the system is managing the vines to ensure the yields are low. The Ugolini Crew system takes this a step further by doing a first pass harvest targeting only the healthiest grape clusters and cutting off any subpar grapes and only making wine with the finest. Only native varieties of the Vapolicella like Corvina, Corvinone, Rondinella, Molinara and others are grown in the Pozzetto vineyard. The wine is fresh, fragrant and crisp so you can enjoy it as an aperitivo or with light fare. Unlike many industrial wineries, the Pozzetto Vapolicella Classico single vineyard crew ages in steel vats without any alteration or addition of flavor or texture from oak. The wine ages in the cellar for three years before making it available to the public. I met with Angelo Ugolini, the son of Giambattista and named after his grandfather, whose primary role is the procurement of the vineyards. Leading a small harvest crew, I got to see exactly how they harvest the grapes using the crew system. Allora Tony, noi stiamo vendemmiando la corvina che andrà a fare il nostro Valpolicella. Siamo nel vigneto delle Giarole, o Pozzetto, è una copertura di circa 4 ettari e mezzo. E l'importante di questa operazione qua in Valpolicella è che le uve siano perfette per andare in cassetta. Quindi l'uva deve essere raccolta perfetta, senza tagli, senza problemi, senza difetti meccanici dell'uva. Ogni grappo deve essere perfetto. Ogni grappo deve essere controllato eh. da mani esperte come i nostri ragazzi e anche il lavoro a, fino alla vendemmia deve essere fatto in un certo modo. Metti solo uno strato a, a una... Solo uno strato. Giusto? Solo uno strato. Che più strati di uva vanno a compattare l'uva, esce l'acqua, si bagna e si sviluppano le muffe. Quindi il minimo difetto può portare allo sviluppo di umidità e quindi di muffa. Poi le uve vengono stoccate in un ambiente in cui la temperatura viene controllata, l'umidità viene controllata e la temperatura dell'aria e tutto quanto. Quindi l'ambiente è il più perfetto possibile, però il prodotto deve entrare perfetto, se no non si possono fare i miracoli con la tecnologia. E cosa, cosa serve questo? Per sapere se è stato messo il giusto quantitativo di uva nella cassetta, quindi tramite il peso. Sappiamo che la cassetta pesa 60 grammi, 70 anzi. Deve essere circa 6 kg e mezzo, come in questo caso qua. Ok, massimo 6. Massimo 6. Esatto. Pozzetto has a lightweight body but full mouthfeel. Seductive aromatics of Veronese cherry, strawberry with rose petal notes, a touch of pepper and a mineral finish. This is the wine that Ernest Hemingway, one of the greatest writers of all time, romanticized about in his books. The next day we went to the San Michele vineyard, located on the hill behind the villa. This single vineyard crew is the Vapolicella Superiore wine, and named after the church behind the vineyard. As I approached the vineyard on foot, I began to realize how steep the slope was. Climbing the rocky stairs, I lost my balance because I wasn't prepared how quickly the slope cut upward. This splendid vineyard lies on the crest of the valley at about 650 feet above sea level. Exposed to the southeast, it's supported by a deep tufa slab of rock, which gives the wines great elegance and aromatic complexity. Here, the Veronese Espalier vine system 
is used to maximize the sun exposures at such a steep slope. The vines are tamed by human hands, producing a low 70 quintals per hectare, offering high quality grapes for wines with a strong identity. Another characteristic of the vineyard are the marrone stone walls that protect the landscape from washing away while attracting sunlight to keep the soils warm and shelter for the proper insects to keep ecological balance. Like Pozzetto, the grapes are hand harvested and hand selected, keeping only the best clusters for vinification. The blend is primarily Corvina, secondarily Corvinone, and then Rondinella, along with a tiny percentage of Oseletta. The grapes are pressed the same day of harvest and are aged in French barrique and large oak casks for at least two years, depending on the vintage. The wine rests in bottle in the estate cellar for a period of an additional three years, so a total of at least five years of aging before releasing to the public. The wine has a brilliant ruby red color with an aroma of red fruits such as Verona cherries, a mix of delicately sweet and spicy notes reminiscent of cocoa, nutmeg, and vanilla. It's a super smooth and sophisticated wine that will tantalize your senses for hours of pleasure.